Okay, it says, figure above shows the graph of the polynomial function f. Uh, yesterday, for those who were here in one of the sessions, I had you make a flashcard that on one side it said polynomial. On the other side, it should have said polynomials and all their derivatives are continuous and differentiable. So the card should say polynomial on one side, the other side should say polynomials, and all their derivatives are continuous and differentiable. Okay. Points for Parker for flashing his card there. It's cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Always reward for enthusiasm, yes? Here's uh -huh. So, poly so on one side it says polynomials, other side polynomials and all their derivatives are continuous and differential. Wait, isn't it like for something to be um, differential it has to be continuous? Yes. So, so me saying that they're continuous and differential is a bit redundant. <laughs> yeah, it would be safe to say, Ellie, that all polynomials are and the derivatives are differentiable because continuous has to be so to be differentiable. Yep, it's perfect. The reason I said both is, gosh darn it, the AP test writers have been a little bit mean on that one. Like it makes no sense to me that you would have to say both, but I've seen a question where you had to say both, so. Uh, so think of it this way. If you have a polynomial, it's going to look something like this. Here's, here's an example of a polynomial. Here's another example of a polynomial. Here's another example. Here's another example. They all have just kind of a nice smooth up and down motion. If this is my polynomial. Brennan Ashcraft, please come to the front office. Uh, let's give extra credit to the whole room. If you go to each and every point on this polynomial, each and every point, true or false, can you find the tangent slope at each and every point? True or false? Show me. If you look at that polynomial, can you find a tangent slope at each and every point of that polynomial? Two points for saying true. That means, Christine, that the um, this polynomial is differentiable. I suddenly forgot Christine. But I was asking about the Oh, my bad. Sorry. So you're okay with what differentiable means. That means this polynomial has a derivative. So the derivative is the, so here's the polynomial, it's a bunch of x, y pairs. The derivative of this polynomial is the list of other x, y pairs where every y value is the slope of this. That's the derivative. So if this is y equals something, we just call that whatever, the derivative is y prime. Is that your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. Three points. Anybody else? Okay. Which value of x is it true that f double prime is less than or equal to f prime of x is less than or equal to f of x? Uh, when I see this pattern, I think I would make a flashcard with that pattern on one side. And then on the other side of the card, I would simply write this. Usually, negative, zero, positive. I have to say usually because they could get trickier. They, never, they haven't yet, but they could. So usually when they ask me to order three things, one of the three is negative, one of the three is positive, one of the three is zero. Questions? Let's wait for cards to be made. Okay, so I guess there's a lot of different ways you can solve this. I would just start right here at A, it's a good place as any. Looking at that, I already know something. Uh, hands up, I don't care, I just want you thinking, not watching. What do I know? What What do I know about A? As I look at it, I know three things about A. Just need to tell me one of them, Josie. Is it uh, so, just don't use the foul language. 
So what? Say it again. Oh, you said it again. Sorry. Um, the there we go. Oh, actually, don't. Say, I'm teasing you a lot here. Five points for Josie for putting up with the teasing. Don't ever say the word it. I need someone else to make a companion sign to go right here. Then you can be on the wall of fame for the rest of you know 15 more years or whatever I teach. Um, it should say function because function is too generic. Um, this is a function. This is a different function. So we don't want to use the words it, we don't want to use the word function, we don't want to use the word graph, we want to use the words f, f prime, f double prime. So say it again, Joseph. There we go, nicely done, four more. Take five, that's an even 10. Okay, so we know that f is increasing. Hands up, come on, how does that help? Come on, think. <laughs> think with me, follow her thought process. Don't shift to a new line of thought, follow her thought process. Alice, why does it help to say that at A, F is increasing? So I know this. F prime of A is positive. Show me your hands if you knew exactly that she was going to say that. Two points, three for Alice. Question. So, hands up. Does that help or not? Come on, hands. Like I. Learning to think is what this class is all about. Does that help? Does that help? Cool. Yes, and because then we know that it's not A because F has to be one positive and it's one negative. Nice. Negative, zero, positive. We're looking for F is the positive one, not F prime. So I would probably cross off A. Be honest. How many knew she was going to say that? Three points, four for Holy. Anybody else? Steven, question. Um, how come, like, it wouldn't be negative, positive, positive? Because, like, can F still be positive, but, like, should be bigger? Five points for, I'm giving away a lot of extra credit today, whatever. <laughs> Five points for Steven. Um, it can absolutely be true. That's why your flashcard says usually. So I'm going to try this first. But if that runs into a roadblock, I'm going to remember the card, which said usually. Okay. Smart. Okay? So now what do you want to do? Somebody else? Hands. Hand is raised, and you end up thinking what the other person thought you get paid. So let's go. Oh. Can you test like point B? Keep talking. So uh, I just got to get you to think a little more detail. I you can't say the you can't say change of concavity without telling me what's changing concavity. F, F prime or F double prime. F is changing concavity. So change So small mistake, no worries. This is the graph of F, and right here, like for all of this space, F is concave down. So at B, F is not changing in capital. Oh, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Keep thinking. Go ahead. So, then, like, what Very well done, Allie. She figured out very nicely. F double prime is definitely negative. That definitely fits this pattern. Okay, regardless of what you were thinking when your hand was raised, you should have been in analyzing the problem as we're doing this, not just watching. How many already knew this before she said it? Two points three for Ellen. Perfect. And we want to talk more about it. Please, sir. Can you find it like since the red and the F and the B on the F thing? Keep talking. And so like since it's increasing to decreasing 
So oh, Georgia swears like a sailor, but oh. it's okay. Um, <laughs> very nice. I'll pay you for that one. Sorry. Um, somebody's like, I'll do that. Um, yeah. Repeat your thought. Okay. Don't say graph, function, it. <laughs> yeah. Say f, f prime or f double prime. Okay. So on f at b, uh, it is changing. No, no. Oh. F is changing. Sorry, F is changing from increasing to decreasing, so it has a relative. So, so F has a relative maximum at D, and so that means that F prime is changing from positive to negative. So would that mean that F prime on B is be zero? Um, that was really well said, and this is a lot of tickets to give out suddenly, but I'm going to give you one more because you're bringing up a really good point. Um, let me sit back to the room. Listen closely. F is definitely changing from increase to decrease at B. So F prime is definitely changing from positive to negative at B. Be careful, that doesn't always guarantee that F prime of B is equal to zero. It, there's not a guarantee that that will happen. It does happen here. There's a better reason why you can tell me that f prime of b is zero. Who knows the better reason? George's reason was a good one. It really was. That's why I paid you. But what's the other reason why I know f prime of b is absolutely zero, Logan? Uh, there's a critical point there because the tangent slope is zero. So same thing again. Say your thought. Just make sure you throw in the words f or f prime. Pause for a second. So you said that nicely. On F, at x equal b, tangent slope of F is definitely zero. And the rest he said was that means F has a critical point right here. That's a critical point of F. That's really how you should come up with this. That's the safe way. How many knew that? Two points, three for the question. Please. Why wouldn't we know for sure that um, x prime is zero if it's changing from if x prime is changing from positive? I gotta think for a second. Uh, three points for Alex. If F does this, let me watch. Going to vote together now? True, false. Does this graph of f have a relative max at x equal, we'll call it a? Does this graph of f have a relative max at x equal a? True, false. Show me your vote. So two, correct answer is true, well done. Because remember your flashcard, F is changing from increase to decrease. That's a relative max on F. In fact, on the flashcard, I actually drew pictures. I would draw pictures on your flashcard. It's this one right here. Okay. okay, true or false? At X equal A, will F prime change from positive to negative? Hands up. I mean, sorry, both. True or false? At x equal a, does f prime change from positive to negative? Show me your vote. True or false? It's funny, people go like this, and they go like this, and they pull it back. <laughs> and they're like, maybe it's three, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, give yourself two more for voting. Just look at Danica's chart. Like, don't contradict yourself. Some of you contradicted yourself. You voted true when I asked, does F change from increase to decrease? You said true. And then when I said, does F prime change from positive to negative? You said false. Uh, Danica's chart is the truth, so don't violate the truth. If 
F is changing increase to decrease. F prime must change positive to negative. Questions? Okay. At x equal a, true or false? Is F prime of a over here, F prime of a equal to zero? True or false? Show me. True, false. Is F prime of a equal to zero? True or false? Give yourself two more for a vote. That one's tricked about half the class. At x equal a, f has a corner. When f has a corner, the value of the slope is undefined at the corner. So f prime of a is not zero. f prime of a is undefined. So that, I'm hoping, answered George's question about you know, how can we have a relative max on f and still not have a value of f prime that is zero. I think, I can't remember that. Alice has to that, sorry. There you go. Did that answer your question, Alice? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so far we know this. Awesome. So we probably should keep thinking about B. Hands up, what else do we know about B? What else do we know about B? Josie. The disease has spread well, a bit. <laughs> Say it again. F is now. Yeah, yeah, it's a very common ailment, <laughs> worse than COVID. Um, <laughs> so F is, that's not a good joke, sorry. <laughs> My neighbor just went to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's going to be okay, but yeah, so it's not, it is a serious thing. So, um, so F is concave down. You with me? So what does that tell you? Nice. So you know F double prime of B. Keep talking, Josie. Does knowing this help? Is that a good thing, bad thing? It's a good thing. Because? Because it helps you know if it's a negative. It's the negative zero plus. Yeah, it follows. It's hard, to, I know, it's hard to say that, but it follows the pattern. Like, I'm not sure how to say it either. Yeah. But we're definitely following the pattern. How many know before she said it? Two points, three for Josie. They want to talk about it. Um, I need your help. Oh, please. I'm sorry. Can you potentially get this problem a lot easier just because we know that F has to be positive, so the only point where F is positive on that graph is. <laughs> for sure. It's good work, Alice. <laughs> I'll say it back for the video. Um, Alice said, wait a minute. <laughs> Mr. Smith, you made us make this flashcard that says um, usually, you know, we're going to have a negative, zero, positive pattern, and F's the one over here under positive, and well, interestingly enough, F of B is the only value on F that is positive, so it does seem like a good place to start. Um, I would still check the others. Because as we said before, the flashcard says usually, but for sure, it's good work. Question? Cool. I need your help. Go. Nice. Um, look. Okay, one thing I'm trying to get you all accustomed to, we've been together for a term. Uh, I really want to get you really, really comfortable with just knowing that when we're discussing things, you don't have to have a question, you don't have to like say it really well, you, know, you just have to have a willingness to speak up. Like really what will help you more than anything is just to go, Mr. Smith, I don't know how to say this, but, and I'll just say, don't worry about it, just talk, but just start talking. If you will start talking, then I can see, this sounds kind of weird, but I can see inside your head. And I can say, oh, this is why you're mixed up. And I can help you fix it. If you won't talk, I can't. So anyway, make sure you talk. Anything else here? Cool. I have another question they want to talk about. 